<laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> don't be shy. This is your time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really love that that they don't air it. So I'm happy that you said some actual real facts about our country. Oh uh, yeah, we we got to be knowledgeable. That's right. People gonna test us, you know. <laughs> of course, the mutants are gonna test us someday. Of course, I, <laughs> and I I myself even learned a little bit that I didn't know on this live. So I'm it's thankful for that. Thank you, yeah. my brother. <laughs> That's okay. you. Let me be but, right back. I gotta take care of baby stuff. Okay, you come back on. <laughs> okay, Miss Flo. So it is so great to have you on this live. This is Caribbean Elite's first official live. So we're appreciative that you joined us today. Really? And we're happy that you're here because you're a superstar, first of all. And kudos to everything that you are doing in your world. And I just wish you more success, even more success. And I want to learn just who you are in terms of outside of that success as well. Who are you as a person and what do you enjoy? What do you love? And then we're going to get into your projects and who you worked with. I know you've been in love and hip hop. You've got a lot going on, <laughs> but give us a little bit about like who you are. All right. Hey, I am Florence Dury. I'm a mother of three boys, age 16, um, 12 and four. And um, I'm a wife. I have two beautiful sisters. My dad passed when I was the age of four. So I pretty much was raised by my mom, a single mother. And um, I have four businesses. I have a beauty bar, a restaurant, a cosmetic line, and a record label right now. Damn. Damn. <laughs> so pretty much I'm a boss yes, lady, you know. In a summary, I could say I'm a boss lady. I came to the U.S. when I was um, the age of 11, and I grew up here in Miami. I am from Miami. Mm -hmm. I went to middle school, high school, uh, college, university, and all. I did them all, and I majored in business administration. So um, pretty much that's it. If I tell you, let me see what, what I love. I love business. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not too I much of business. I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> What you just said is just beautiful, right? It literally, we don't get to tell that side of the story. You know, people think that we this pretty faces, but behind all of that is business ownership. You know, like I have two master's degrees. I have two daughters, Amina and Amelia, 19 and 14. I always own several businesses. And it's so interesting that people are like, really? Yeah. Like, how do you do that? And so like kudos to you and for even you. hearing that. Um, because I know as a uh, entrepreneur, um, how difficult it is to juggle all of these things um, that you have going on. So, you know, tell us how you do that. How do you juggle? Well, sure. Let me tell you, girl, I'm thankful that I have my family around. I'm thankful that I have my mom, my sisters, my husband, my cousin. So it's like everybody's kind of like covering somewhere mm -hmm. for me. Because if we want to be realistic, girl, if you're busy at one business, trust me, the other one is lacking on yeah. something. Yep. And if you don't have the right person to be there for you, it, it, everything is going to clash. And if I have to attend to my kids, be a mother, and go to their... um parties go to attend whatever they have going on graduation kindergarten graduation whatever they have going on that means i'm not present at my other businesses so if i don't have someone there to actually cover those parts for me then i wouldn't be able to make it so i always thank god for my family my mom my sister and everybody that's always supported yeah you know i always tell uh women you know we're juggling so much and that is okay and it's also okay to drop some of the balls yes uh, as long as you have someone that's there to help you pick some of those balls up you know yep. you will be just fine and so that is cr like really really critical is having that <laughs> them. so i'm glad that you have that as well in in place and yeah. tell me a little bit about how you got into music was this a late bloom thing did you just grow into this thing were you born with it did you just how did you discover it <laughs> honestly i was i was always a big fan of music i i love music like i would rather listen to music instead of watching a movie mm. so i would I, I always had it in me and um 
when I came into the US, I started off by modeling. I went to Barbizon modeling school. I mean, I think everybody in Miami went to Barbizon. <laughs> but yeah, I did Barbizon. And then after that, I kind of like took a big shift and just focused on my um, career, which was my businesses. But then I started a business on um, Facebook, like an online business where, you know, I had to start doing lives on Facebook. You know, I had to get seen a little more. I used to do my makeup online on Facebook. And suddenly I got a phone call and they were like, hey girl, listen, we got one of the top Haitian bands. They're looking for a model and we want you. And it was the director, shout out to Smitty, I produced. He said, we want you for that video. I was like, me being a video girl, I don't know about that. I ain't doing that. That's not for me. <laughs> That's not my thing. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And then he said, yes, it's, it'll be very good for you. It's, it'll be great exposure, especially with your cosmetic line. You get more people to see you and you'll be able to sell more. It's great exposure. Take the opportunity that I'm giving you. Trust me, you would not regret it. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Impulse, one of the top Haitian band that we do have in Haiti. So then I went and when I got there and I noticed that everything was setting up, I ran. I ran out and I was like, mm -mm, this is not for me. That's not my thing. I'd rather go stand at my restaurant and post stuff online. And if they purchase them, they just purchase them, whatever. And then um, he went outside and he grabbed me. He was like, Flo, you need to do this. You have to do this. This is for you. This, this position is yours. You'll be able to act so well. You'll be playing his wife. And I know how you are with your husband. I see, I watch you guys a lot. It'll be great for you. And I said, you know what, well, forget it. I'm just going to go in and do it. And I did that. And a lot of people started noticing me. A lot of people started, you know, knowing who I was. You know, my, it, it did help my um, cos cosmetic line. And then I got another phone call from the same guy again. He was like, listen, we got new look now, Arlie. And New Look, mind you, is, uh, is one of the classics that Vladworth was talking mm -hmm. about. And he was like, this is bigger than what, what you, you know, what right. you just did. You need to get on this. And I said, really? Again? People going to see me doing this? They won't think I'm a video girl or whatever? And then he's like, no, just get yourself out there. You need to get yourself out there. And then I did it, and I blew up where they started booking me and everything with that um, band. Mm -hmm. And I created a huge fan base uh, way before while I was promoting my cosmetic line. And that fan base enjoyed it so much that they wanted more. And because people used to question, they used to be like, hold up, why, are, why is she getting booked all the time with this band? Is she singing with this band? What is she doing with this band? Like, what is she doing, as right. a matter of fact? Uh -huh. I thought she was just a big business owner like what is she doing right and I used to get bashed I used to get talked down about yes I used to get um it was a lot for me yeah I used yeah to get bullied and everything mm -hmm. and at the end at the end it all worked out because my fans were there my flow nations were there to push me and they told me to come out with a song flow we want something we want more we want people to stop bullying you we want people to see you for who you truly are. You can do it. We'll be right here with you to push you and make sure that you succeed right in front of everybody's face. Wow. And that gave me a lot of motivation. And I, I got booked in Chile with one of the top DJ, DJ Tony Meeks. And it was a lot of talking for real. People were, was, were just asking, why are they booking her? Why not they... Why not book people that's already out there, young women who's already singing, young women who's already in the game? Why her? And I felt like it was the time for me to prove myself to the world, prove myself to the Haitian community, prove myself to myself, right. you know, <laughs> prove myself to everybody else, even my children, you know, at least do something because, you know, sometimes they would know when I was getting bullied because I would go home and cry sometimes I would get in my room and I would cry my husband used to support me and my son at the time was probably what 12 13 or 14 I can't remember exactly but he was right there he was right there you know and he was looking at me how I was getting bullied and I was like you know this is it that's it and I got in the studio and I started doing rap creole wow 
awesome. Yeah, and that's how I released my first track in 2017. And when I got on stage in Chile, there was over 10,000 people yeah. at that. Yeah, I think it was like a stadium. It was over 10,000 people. And as soon as I got on stage with that mic, and I said, you know, it's Cite Nom, and that, which means say my name. Cite Nom, flow. Uh -huh. So I just walked out and I said, Cite Nom, flow. And the whole crowd was just saying my name, flow, 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 flow. And that gave me chills. And I bust out crying after. And I was like, yo, I need to do this. I need to do this for other young women that's out there that's thinking that they cannot do it. I need to do this for my fans, for everybody else, for the whole Haitian community, because I knew that God put me in this world to do something different. That that that's a beautiful story you gave me chills because that is that is literally like i'm such a lover of like woman women in general yeah. i'm a lover of like how we morph and manifest into like just who we are meant to be in spite of like the yeah. odds and you have that story that's kind of like that phoenix rise out of the ashes and 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 prove to yourself and prove to your family and everyone that you are it and you are enough and as long as you love and appreciate yourself everyone else will yeah. fall in well, line yes congratulations that's, that's a beautiful story thank you and, thank you. and i so that's how i got into the music industry to be honest with you that's how you got into it. yeah it sounds like it so from, yeah. you kind of just took your rightful place <laughs> i said you took your rightful place that's all I did. <laughs> it was there for that's the all I did. entire time. And that's, that's all that's I did. Awesome. So you, yep. you have a song. Oh, so first, before we get to your song, Love and Hip Hop Miami. Yes. Tell us about how that kind of took place. And what is, has that experience been for you? Well, that came about, you know, um, because I'm Haitian. They were looking for a Haitian couple. Okay. Yes. Okay. They were looking for a Haitian hot couple. And at the time, you know, I was really popping. My music was popping. My husband and I was everywhere. Every event he was there. So everybody looked up to us. And we, we used to post together a lot. Me, my children, my husband, everything. And we were like, you know, the family that everybody would want to know about. Mm -hmm. Because I'm that type of girl. I'm very reserved. I don't really like... To to expose my personal life but you know that took a whole shift when I actually signed up for Love and Hip Hop because now everything is out there right. <laughs> like everything has to be out right. there so um yeah they were looking for a Haitian couple and then everybody was referring me right everybody was referring my husband and I to be on the show get them get them get them get them get them and I was referred by one of his good friends Jeffrey Bruno that was the first person who actually told them to listen get this couple you will not regret and they actually did and um when they came to me and I was like hmm, I don't think I want to do reality TV because I'm not built for this but then I when I kept saying that I'm not built for this I said you know what that's this. I'm doing the same thing from back in the days. It's like I'm crying again. No, right. I'm gonna give it a try. Right. I'm gonna push to the max. If this thing fall on my lap, I'm gonna take yeah. it. And I'm yeah. I'm gonna run with it. But you know, sometimes do I think it, it was the best decision? I don't know because now everything is all out there. Everything is just exposed posed out there the experience right. for me was kind of scary at the beginning because i did not know what to expect yeah you understand? yeah mm -hmm. so um it was a lot yeah and you have um a lot. and i know some of the cast members there shout out to bobby and, and yeah. some others that i've had the pleasure of meeting and hanging out with um you know carly and i are really good friends are carly okay. red up in atlanta and so i know that you know the love and hip-hop it's a family and you know, it is and and i know that it can be a lot so when people just like see it on tv they're like oh you know but these people really are putting their lives on display on tv yes on this <laughs> literally judged and talked about and laughed at and and then you know there's also really great emotional connections you make with these people assuming that they're characters but this in fact is 
your real life that is on TV, right? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And how did your children feel about that aspect? Wow. Well, at first it was confusing to them because they're like, um, when they came to my house to film the first time and they were filming the children and they're like, hold on, why we got to make eggs while filming? <laughs> Isn't this supposed to be fake? Why are we actually eating and having real conversations? Is, isn't this supposed to be fake so it was just like um confusing to them but then you know my husband and i we sat them down and we explained to them like hey listen we're really about to put our actual lives on tv yeah. so it's not fake it's real you just gotta go with the flow and be who you are and just sell did you give them the whole don't embarrass me while we on tv oh. <laughs> That's a, my youngest sometimes I tell because he talks a lot <laughs> he talks a lot I told him I said listen once this camera's on you watch you what you say don't be don't okay. be crazy <laughs> I, if you poop on yourself and you say that on tv everybody gonna know you pooped on yourself okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's switch it a little bit and talk about like just the Caribbean Music Awards that has launched and just from your I guess your opinion on the need of these types of awards um, as it pertains to like highlighting Caribbean artistry um, entertain our music our icons you know obviously there are African Music Awards and there's hip hop, you know, the hip hops and the this and the that and all these other things. But there hasn't been one like really, really good, well produced, in my opinion, um, Music Awards show. And that is what Caribbean Elite Magazine is doing with the Caribbean Music Awards show. So give us kind of your take on this idea. Do you think we need it? Do you think we don't need it? What are the things? I think, I think it? we definitely need it. I think we definitely need it. I think it will highlight a lot of our legends um, to uh, the Caribbeans. And, you know, a lot of people will actually get to know the Haitian artists even more. Because um, right now, I see that, um, like um, Vlad was saying, the Africans are taking over. So if we don't do something, us as Haitians, if we don't try to tap into other, you know, countries, other things it's like you know we are not going to be really seen though and we're doing such a great job and our genre has such an um, such an amazing sound so we need to get that spotlight too so we deserve it so i think it will it means a lot to the haitian community and i think it will help us a lot and um i think that's a great um uh, it's a it's something good that's gonna happen once we put together all of our Haitian artists and highlight them. I think it will be better. It'll be real good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's talk a bit about this song, my love. Let's yes. see. I'm actually just pulling it up right now. I'm not gonna play it, but bounce that. Let's talk a lot about Bounce That. Like, what was the inspiration around this? And you got to work with a beautiful Trina, whom we all love. Um, tell us about that song. How did that come about? Okay, with Trina, it came about um, a friend put us together to get this track done. And I was in the studio. When I got to the studio with my husband, and I it was with her team as well. Uh, when we got to the studio, you remember way back, I don't know if you know a lot about Trina. Mm -hmm. you remember the song that she got, put over that ass too fat. Woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> Woo -woo. So when I got there, everybody was like, okay, what's one of your favorite tracks from Trina? And I was like, you know, she's a legend. I used to watch her back in the days when I was in high school. And one of my favorite songs was that song. And I said, we're going to take it back and do something very similar and get my track because if I think I'll be satisfied, I'll be happy if I could get something similar to something that I admire and something that I used to um I used I used to enjoy listening to back in the day. So that's how it came about. So that was the idea. That's how 
the idea came about too. Mm -hmm. And my husband was there and he was like, yeah, you right, you right. We're going to do, we're we going to take it back. We're going to do something similar. And then he started writing the hook and then boom, we laid the verse. She came in, she did her verse and it was fun. It was a great opportunity. And I'm so grateful because let me tell you something for the way that I started doing music. I never thought one day that I would be doing a song with Trina Aww. right now. <laughs> you understand? So I'm grateful for that. And the experience was amazing. I loved it. I enjoyed it. She has a great personality. She's amazing. She's sweet. She I have nothing negative to say about her. If they would ask me if I would do it again, I would do it again 50, a thousand times again because she's good. She, she's really good. And she, you could tell that she was willing to, you know, do it. It's not something that she was forced to do it. It's she gave, she gave it all. all. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. I mean, and that's women supporting women. Another thing that gets me all uh, 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 excited inside. So yeah. congratulations on that. So tell us how this song is doing right now. And what, so one of the things that I really love to do is ask, artists like yourself and just people that I interview and even ask myself this, right? We're, we're really good with just um, being very humble and I, and I appreciate that. But what is it you need from us? We, you know, we have a couple of hundred people watching right now. What can we do to support Flo and Flo's journey? Uh, right, now, <laughs> right now, what I need is everyone to keep streaming my song. That's what's going to help me. Okay, I need to still remain on the top charts on iTunes because when the first when the song first released, I was number six on iTunes hip hop charts, and that meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep streaming, purchase the song, um, follow me, stay you know, stay connected, give me a like, give me a comment. Sometimes it doesn't cost anything, right? Just to get your support. Just a little like, a little share, and come out. Come out. Let's say if I post something, come out. Come support. That's the best way you can support an artist right now is by purchasing their songs or just by showing support online on social media. Beautiful, beautiful, and I appreciate you saying that. That is definitely key. So if you guys are watching, support by streaming, downloading, um, so it's music and giving her the, that engagement, that like and support. Yeah of encouragement as she continues that means a to thrive lot. in her community and in her career um, as a mother, as a businesswoman, as a wife. Like these are the types of people that we want to continue to hold up and make sure that they do well because when Flo makes it, guess what? We all make it. And so keep, keep rolling up to the top, my girl. I am so proud of Thank you. Thank you. And congrats. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on and just being so candid with us tonight. Of course. And forward to having you at the award show in in oh. august august 31st oh. so is that a, please, get, please follow elite caribbean um sorry, caribbean elite magazine so you guys can uh learn more about what Car uh, caribbean elite magazine is doing and the award show turn on your push notifications and we will make sure you get all the information you need if you're enjoying this interview and many more interviews to come definitely follow us Flo, you've been amazing and thank I you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in tonight. Thank you, my Flow Nations. I love you guys so much. Thank you to everyone that's here tonight. Um, if you're not already following me, make sure you follow me on, on IG Florence DeRay. And please stream to my song. The song is called Bounce That with Trina. Go listen to it. It's a great track. It's fun. It's a summer track. You're going to enjoy it, you know, and se kwe budao. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Stay on. We have some more guests that's popping in here to speak with us as we are celebrating the Haitian Heritage Month. Oh, we got... Oh, okay, hold on. We got one more person coming on. Let's get Vlad back on here. Oh, there we go. There you go. Welcome back. Uh, we Perfect time. Back. And we back. And we in here, baby. <laughs> we back. What's happening? What's happening? So Flo just jumped off. Did you were you able to catch? Yeah, I was watching. I was watching. I was watching Flo. Yeah. Good, good, good. Beautiful conversation. Beautiful spirit. We're glad we got to have her on. And um, you know, we gotta keep supporting artists and just individuals that are doing dope things. And how does that feel for you? Like a another Haitian 
um, member of your community doing amazing things um, within her own space? Like, how does that feel? Because I find you guys really support each other. Um, I mean, I love it, man. And I, anybody, any Haitian just uh, propelling themselves to, uh, you know, better comfort, better space of comfort, I'm all for it. So uh, I, I love it, man.